How's it going, people? I'm splendid. I hope you're doing well. I've never done a movie review before, and I thought it's um, time I started. So, naturally, as you can tell by the title, I want to talk about The Passion of Mel, a movie he directed wearing a clown nose. Um, <laughs> don't get me wrong, I respect Mel Gibson. I mean... You know, Lethal Weapons were great, you know, and he did a great job on with Hamlet. And Apocalyptico is an amazing movie. But um, even though this movie did well, and I understand that adults were crying their eyes out in the theater, I was moved uh, to roll my eyes. <laughs> and I would love to do the whole movie bit by bit and break it down, but I think I, for the sake of DMCA fair use, I'm going to condense it and break it up a little bit. So let's start off with the beginning quote, shall we? Which I'll show you right here. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, the uh, Christians sure love Isaiah. So do the Mormons. They lifted whole uh, chapters of Isaiah in the King James Bible. Translation errors and all. About a third of the Book of Mormon is uh, Isaiah. <laughs> well, Mel likes one verse out of chapter 53. Let's take a look at 52 real quick, because if you read this all the way through, it is one running monologue, one running commentary. And in 52, let's see, you know, shake thyself from the dust, O Zion, O Jerusalem, and, you know, rise from the dirt and all that. You know, you're going to rise up, you know, from your grave and all that kind of talk, you know. And, and they've been oppressed in Egypt and by the Assyrians and um, captive daughter of Zion and the bride maid and all these wonderful terms and and the servant of God, Jerusalem and Zion, God's slave. And we all know the king of Jerusalem was the son of God. His, that's what he said about um, Hezekiah. That's what he even said about Solomon. I'll adopt him. He's my son this day. And, let's see, anyway, yeah, um, yeah, yep, salvation, um, um, the eye of the Lord shall bring again Zion, see, this is all resurrectional talk, um, more salvation, um, uh, let's see. Uh, 14 of uh, verse 14 of 52. Um, as many were astonied at thee, astonied, um, his vicious, his vision was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. At what point are we talking about Jesus? Um, 15, so shall he sprinkle many nations. That could be a prophecy. The kings shall shut their mouths at him, for that which had not been told them shall they see. And that which they had not heard shall they consider. And, you know, that's how they wrap the 52. <clears throat> and a lot of resurrection talk and being oppressed, and in daughter of Zion, my servant, the bridegroom, and all that shit. All right, then we go into 52, 53, excuse me. The chapter Mel seems to like, at least a one verse out of it. Seems to be talking about Jesus. But if you read this through, it just, we put that chapter break there. It would just keep going. I mean, at what point? Does one end and one begin? 
That's an artificial break that some editor put there. Who hath believed our report? The report he was talking about in the last chapter. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? I mean, really. Um, two. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. He shall. Sounds like he's talking about the future. How far? Um, and as a root out of a dry ground, he hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Well, we're talking about coming back from the Babylonian exile into a ruined Jerusalem. Um, <clears throat> a resurrection of sort. Three. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid, uh, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. He was. That's Now we're getting into past tense. How is this a prophecy? Um, four. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Past tense. Five. But... He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, and uh, the chastenment of our peace was upon him. And with his st his stripes we are healed. And I, that's more or less what Mill was quoting from an, probably another translation. But anyway, um, and um, sheep gone astray. Well, you know they're all out there in Babylon. Uh, he was oppressed, and he was afflicted, and that's at seven. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. Past tense, all of this. He was taken, was, uh, from prison, from judgment, and, and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, except maybe the clearing of the temple. But we're not talking about Jesus with his corded cat of nine tails beating the hell out of the money changers. Because he didn't do any violence. Of course, this could be talking about somebody else, maybe. Could also be some metaphorical, hoped-for figure. Um, I mean, this is applied to Jesus, not necessarily about him. Um, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Well, that's debatable. Um, Ten. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. It pleased Mel to kick the shit out of Jesus, or the actor playing him. <laughs> he hath put him to grief, past tense. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Well, his seed are the people, the children of Jerusalem. And J Jesus was supposed to be the king of Jerusalem now, wasn't he? The son of David. Anyway, um, so a lot of scapegoatism in this, and they love that scapegoatism. Um, but, you know, like down in here, Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide, divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. So, he's going to divide the spoil. Sounds like a conquering kind of guy. Now, how is this about Jesus? But Mel, like that one little verse where it's all about Jesus getting the crap kicked out of him for us. 
So I'm going to talk about this a little more. This is running long because I'm talking too much, so I will do another video where I will show the scene of him being arrested and getting the crap beat out of him by the entire Jewish nation, apparently. So I hope you stay tuned for that because I'm doing it next. I don't know when I'm putting these up, but uh, if you've had enough, and I don't blame you, peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you're having, and chime in if this changed your life, saved your soul, or turned you off, or whatever.